Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. Last time we talked about Xinyan, and in her video I said I would be covering Lisa next, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Today, let's talk about Genshin Impact's best climber, Lisa. I can't believe I actually said that. As per usual, before we get started, to all those who stand Lisa, I just want to make a disclaimer that this video is not a personal attack, nor am I trying to say you're playing the game wrong or making a mistake by using her. The goal of why no one plays is to discuss characters who aren't used very much by the general player base, analyzing from the perspective of those who don't use her, why they're unpopular, and hopefully figuring out ways you can improve or fix their gameplay. At the end of the day, Genshin is a very easy game, and you're free to use whoever the hell you want. So aside from being the generic big sister trope you see in every popular anime game or anime in general, Lisa is our first introduction to not only the Catalyst weapon type, but Electro as an element. Alongside Amber and Kaya, she's a free unit you acquire in the Mondstadt Archon quest to round out your party. You know, assuming you didn't pull for anyone until that point. And she has a pretty interesting kit. Visually, I would say she's the most eye-catching character of the Knights of Favonius, and contrasts from Amber's very earnest and forthright personality. It was also cute that her story quest entailed you taking her out on a date of sorts. Needless to say, Lisa is a very well-known character, and a popular one among the community, for reasons. Yet strangely, you have a better chance of getting two 5 stars back to back from polls than a player who actually uses her past the part where she's required. Much like Aether and Lumine, there's a lot that suggests Lisa is far more powerful than she looks. Her in-game description says she's Sumeru Academia's most distinguished graduate in 200 years. That's pretty dang impressive. In some capacity, Lisa is as strong in game as she is in lore, probably the strongest of the four starting characters in overall potential damage output by a very wide margin. As is stated in previous videos, units are either popular because people love them as characters or because they're strong. Lisa most definitely has the appeal, and all sides point to her being a powerful mage. So where did the chain break? What prevented her from being a high value unit? Simplest way to answer, it's not if she has the power, it's how she uses that power. Lisa's main point of concern is that she doesn't feel good to play by the standards of Genshin Impact, namely in that she takes far too long to do just about, well, anything. In a game where characters are supposed to be fast and agile, quick to adjust their position and respond to situations, Catalyst users are already notoriously poor choices for main damage dealers. Though they are able to do a lot of damage in the right conditions, it's getting those conditions where things become less practical. Lisa represents this to the utmost extreme. Violet Arc is where everything begins for her. Like many other elemental skills, it has a press version and a hold. On press, it's a simple orb of electro damage. Granted, it has a very short cooldown of only one second, so you can easily weave it in between your normal attacks, but for the most part, you don't really have a valid reason to do so other than to add conduction stacks. On hold, Lisa channels her two seconds before blowing up an entire area around her with electro damage, increasing in power based on the number of conduction stacks there are on each opponent. Make no mistake, the damage is staggering. Max power level 13, Lisa can do over 1000% damage with her elemental skill, that's not even her burst. Sounds impressive on paper, but let's break down everything wrong with this ability. First, the most glaring problem, it's channel time. To trigger the full explosion of Violet Arc, you have to hold the skill for at least 2 seconds. It may not seem like a lot, but it's noticeably longer than other swap out elemental skills like Shinchou, Bennett, Shangling, Sucrose, Kazuha Shogun, and the like. The only one who comes remotely close to that amount of hold time is Zhongli, although for him, a couple of seconds are a small price to pay for the gift of near invincibility. Why this matters a lot is because using Lisa breaks natural combat tempo for the player. I did mention this in Aloy's video, where it takes too long for her to build up coil stacks and her cryo damage bonus in a normal rotation, thus requiring you to waste time trying to get her to optimal levels before actually using her. Lisa is much the same way. Every popular unit in Genshin has an elemental skill that produces instant results. Xiao's dash attack, Ayaka's ice burst, Ganyu's flower decoy, Diona's little bubble thing of Maduhikis, I think you get the idea. You can run through them very quickly, whereas on Lisa, the extra time spent on using her for a normal rotation can be drawing for players. Essentially, it's too clunky. The second problem, the conditions necessary to achieve that glorious 1000% damage ratio. Lisa needs to tag each enemy of import three separate times with conduction. If you're using her as your primary damage dealer, that means a minimum of three seconds on the field, plus the two seconds to channel just to get one instance of actual damage. If using her as a sub DPS, which most of the very few people who use her are, you have to go through a couple swaps. At that point, the only enemies that really last that long are those in the latter floors of Spiral Abyss, or bosses like Signora and Eishtaha. Furthermore, the Lightning Orb doesn't have very much range or area coverage, but in her defense, we have no shortage of animo units who can force clusters of enemies into a tight spot. Now thanks to Induced Aftershock, there is a way for her to easily apply conduction stacks through her charge attack. It does help, but not enough to speed things up by a considerable amount. 
Third problem, the cooldown, 16 seconds. Now in light of the number of comments bringing this up, yes, you can alleviate high cooldown elemental skills using sacrificial weapons. At max refinement, they give you almost a guaranteed ability reset. But once again, that's only one of many hoops it gets you through. Another frustrating element about Violet Arc is that if at any point in time you get hit with a strong attack during the 2 second channel, it breaks the channel time. And the only way to overcome this is with a shield or constellation 2, even though it really should just be part of her skill by default. And yes, I'm aware of her other constellations, I'll talk about that later. It's not riddled to the same extent with quality of life problems, but Lightning Rose also struggles with counterproductivity. The initial discharge of electricity launches surrounding opponents, which defeats the purpose of any persistent AoE damaging field. The good ones like Ganyu's or Kazuha's keep everyone stuck in the same place, give or take. Pushing enemies away not only makes it more difficult for follow-up attacks, but it knocks them outside of the radius attack, thus making it almost useless. Then of course, as stated countless times before in other videos, Lisa's elemental burst is rapid applications of electro damage instead of a single blast. If she's there just to apply superconduct or electro charge, quality doesn't matter all that much. But to my knowledge, with overload and swirl, it does. Lisa's mountain of restrictions are too smothering for anyone to really make use of in every situation. You can overcome all the hurdles in her kit, but it begs the question, is it even worth it when there are so many other electro and or catalyst users to choose from? That brings us to our next big issue. There's absolutely nothing within Lisa's kit that she doesn't get completely outclassed in, except for one thing, only you lose so much more than you gain from said thing. I suppose in the greater context of Genshin Impact, the existing top tier units go way above and beyond what is actually expected of them, so it wouldn't be the fairest judgement to say that Lisa is objectively worse when this game is closer to that of Minecraft than it is to Dark Souls in terms of difficulty. That being said, she falls behind in both parts damage and support. Like I said, in the right conditions, she does just as much damage as a 5 star, I kid you not. Violet Arc hits like a truck, but the amount of setup it requires makes it too impractical and inconsistent. Even if Kuching, Shogun, Beidou, Sada, Fischl, and whatnot don't have as much one-tap burst damage as Lisa, they're still way better picks because it's easier to get their pressure out on the field. As another example, let's look at Yu-Gi-Oh for a moment. We have two cards, Pot of Greed and Pot of Avarice. I have absolutely no idea what Pot of Greed does, but based on what I could gather, I I think it lets you draw two cards, I'm not sure, you might have to fact check me on that. As for Pot of Avarice, it also lets you draw two cards, but you have to shuffle no less than five monsters from your graveyard into your deck. In other words, you can't use this card if you don't have five monsters to shuffle. That's what makes Pot of Greed infinitely more better than Pot of Avarice. Consistency. In video games, consistency is the most important trait to have in characters or classes because it ensures they produce the same output no matter what their circumstance is. Zhongli, for instance, has a very long cast time on his hold similarly to Lisa, but in exchange, you become virtually indestructible, gain super armor, and deal effectively 25% bonus damage to all nearby enemies thanks to the resist shred. The payoff is well worth the time required to activate it. Lisa is only good if everything works out perfectly for her. At best, her damage beats at any other 4-star Electro unit. At worst, she's by far the weakest Electro unit. The only remaining way she can generate value for her team is through her supportive capabilities, and at a glance, she doesn't seem too bad. If memory serves, she's the only unit in Genshin Impact to this day who is capable of breaking enemy defense within her base kit thanks to static electricity field. It causes her ultimate to decrease enemy defense by 15% for 10 seconds. Not too shabby at all. Razor's 15% break requires Constellation 4, and it's not even for the same duration. Lightning Rose is also a persistent effect, so you can cast her ult then switch back to your main carry. At the very least, if you're looking for Superconduct or Electro Charge, you can easily achieve that with her. Apart from that, she doesn't do a whole lot else. 15% Defense Break is by no means irrelevant, but it's the only thing Lisa can do. She can't even battery for her team to the same extent as Electro Traveler. If you think about good support units, they have to be able to perform several different roles by themselves. Zhongli gives you an overpowered shield, super armor, bonus damage, and petrification. Xingqiu gives you damage reduction, some token regeneration, hydro cleanse, supplementary damage, and easy access to hydro reactions. Sucrose gives you crowd control, energy recharge, a huge amount of elemental mastery, elemental damage bonus, and so on. Lisa's utility is only reflected by her defense break, everything else comes in the form of damage. With that in mind, some of you may try to argue, what about Xiangling, she's pretty much all damage as well, and she's one of the best. That is a good point, so could Lisa perhaps be viable as a sub DPS? Yes and no. Shanling's high rating is not due to her value as a damage support, not entirely anyway, it's her accessibility and her element. For one, everyone gets her for free by completing the early floors of Spiral Abyss. Additionally, she's a pyro character whose pyro application parallels Xingqiu's hydro. There's just one other thing, Shanling is able to max her constellation very easily, Lisa cannot. 
Just like Amber, Lisa has not and will never be featured on event banners because she's a free character, ironically making it exceedingly more difficult for you to get 6 more copies of her than a unit that costs primo gems to be acquired. The only other way you can attain her outside of pulling is through Paimon's bargains, and so far she's been featured only 3 times, November 2020, May 2021, and once again in November 2021. Even if you're a day 1 player, you only have her at Constellation 3. Want to know the worst part? Her constellations are some of the best I've seen on a 4 star and they're borderline critical to have on her. Infinite Circuit gives her a ridiculous amount of energy charge from Violet Arc, on top of the energy it already gives. She can recharge her elemental burst extremely quickly, probably just as quickly as Shogun. Electromagnetic Field gives her bonus defense and super armor while holding Violet Arc, thus preventing her channel from being interrupted. As mentioned before, this really should just be part of her base kit. Plasma Eruption effectively triples the total damage of her elemental burst, and finally, Pulsating Witch, when you swap to Lisa, she immediately applies 3 conduction stacks to all nearby opponents, just by swapping to her. That straight up fixes almost every problem with her elemental skill. The only reason channeling for 2 seconds feels so bad on her is because she doesn't do enough to warrant that much time, and the only time it's actually worth channeling is when enemies have max conduction. But the only way to do that is to use charge attacks or wait 3 seconds, all while somehow keeping your targets together. You can literally bypass all of that with C6. Switch to Lisa, everyone has max conduction, easy 1000% damage. Imagine if Xiangling automatically summoned a Pyronado just by swapping in. That's how good it is for Lisa. The problem is of course, you need 6 copies of her with no pity system backing you up. She costs basically as much as a 5 star without actually being a 5 star. Incidentally, something I always thought should be a thing is free Stella Fortunas for free units. Aether and Lumine unlock their constellations by progressing through the game. I don't see a reason why Amber, Lisa, and Kaya shouldn't have the same. It's kind of a slap in the face that the very characters you get at the start of the game are harder to max out than those you have to acquire. And it's not like C6, Amber, Kaya, and Lisa are top tier either. Lisa will still be more niche than Shogun, Fischl, Sada, and Beidou purely because of her kit and weapon type, but at least she'll be a serviceable mid tier, you know? See, whenever I talk about why no one plays a character in either League of Legends or Genshin, I'm not saying everyone should be like Zhongli, an overpowered or overloaded unit who solo carries you through the game. But they should at least all feel worth investing in. I think the best case of this is Smash Ultimate. They did fail 4 times in the past with Smash 64, Melee, Brawl, and Smash 4, but in Ultimate, no one is completely unusable. Are there better fighters than others? Absolutely, but even though people like to crap on Ganondorf for being the worst character in the game, he has enough going for him to where he still trashes noobs in Elite Smash. The difference between the best character and the worst is not that wide. Genshin is able to easily accomplish this too. Unlike other gacha titles where it comes down to numbers, a lot of low performing unpopular characters can be brought up with a few touch ups. In Lisa's case, giving her free Stella Fortunas alone will do wonders for her. Maybe make it so Lightning Rose stuns enemies equal to the amount of conduction stacks they have. Very small changes or adjustments that can vastly improve their quality of life and gameplay experience without turning them into the next power creep. The sad thing about Lisa, Kokomi, Shinyan, and Klee is that each of them fulfill a niche. Lisa's an Electro Nuke, which is different from the usual fast rapid attacks you see on other characters of that element. Shinyan is a bruiser type character, one who focuses on equal parts power and defense, whereas usually everyone is just power or defense. Kokomi is a battle healer, she can dish out meaningful damage while keeping her party alive. And Klee is a pyro machine gunner, which differs from the usual explosion attacks you see from other characters of that element. Notice how three of them are catalyst users too. That makes me wonder, is the catalyst weapon type itself only really good for support characters not damage dealers? Could be a good video idea, maybe I should talk about that. For now though, I think that's about all I have to say about Lisa. She has the potential to be on the same level as like Fischl or Rosaria if they just fixed a few of those problems. Genshin in general has a severe lack of good 4 star DPS units. I know they're trying to market all the 5 stars as damage dealers, but for the sake of free to play players, they should try to get a couple serviceable 4 stars in there. Again, Genshin is super easy outside of Spiral Abyss, so they don't have any reason not to put some cheap but high value characters in the roster. What do you guys think? Do you think Lisa is underrated and a lot better than people say, or is she forever doomed to be everyone's entertainment whenever climbing walls and cliffs? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you gave it a like and subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out my previous Why No One Plays episodes if you haven't yet. For now though, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.